Welcome to a playthrough. I'm going to do a playthrough today of a very cool game, a solitaire only game from Holland Spiel called The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. You can see I've got it set up here. This game deals with, uh, in, in the Roman Empire, from 170 to 180, the uh, Roman legions were battling the Germanic tribes, Germanic and Sarmatian tribes, uh, kind of in northeast Europe uh, there. And they're referred to as the Marcomannic Wars. Now, I'm not a Roman historian. I'm not pretending to be that. I think that's what I've been able to garner from the uh, rules and the little bit of reading that I have done. But so this is a, once again, a solitaire game. And in essence, if you look here at the screen, you'll see there are three different tracks. These are called barbarian tracks. There's the Marcomanni tribe, the Quadi tribe, and the Iazages tribe. And they have to, they have their homeland. You can see these spaces are marked as their home. The Romans are simply trying to beat back all three of these tribes to their homeland, defeating them in combat, getting them to surrender, and that's how they win. If the Roman player can have all three tribes surrendered at one time, prior to the end of 179 CE, they will win the game. If not, they will lose the game, uh, and it, it is very challenging. This is my... 11th or 12th play, and I've only won twice. So, you know, that, that to me, that's what I want out of a solitaire game, an extreme challenge with easy rules that is understandable. I think this game fits all of those, um, all three of those aspects. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to give you a lot of rules explanation. We'll kind of go through it as we go along, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. The game does use cards. The cards are off to my left. I will show you the cards here in the screen that you need to see. Don't worry about those. But there is a Barbarian deck. Uh, it is 50 cards. And then there's a Roman deck, and it is also 50 cards. In both of the decks, there are cards that are referred to as the Late War cards, which will be added after, uh, or at the beginning of the year, I'm sorry, yeah, 175 CE, they will be just, uh, mixed into the deck, and uh, you'll play with those as well. But it is in a, it's a card-driven-esque game. The cards for the Romans can be used to discard to take actions, or you can take the printed event on them. Usually the printed event is better. It gives you bigger bonuses or things that you can't normally do. Uh, but from time to time, you've got to just simply discard a card to do something. Make an attack, put a fort out increase your Imperium points, etc. So once again, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. You will notice that the Kawadi, during the first part of the first round, they have a marker on top of them that says Kawadi cannot attack. So what that means is I, as the Romans, cannot attack the Kawadi while they are in their home space. They are the only one of the three tribes that start in their home space if you were able to attack them and defeat them immediately, uh, they could then they would then be surrendered, and it would be, you know, the, the purpose of the game would would be confounded. So, the Marcomanni start here, just north of the Danube River, uh, in near Vendabona, um, and the Iazages, which I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. They start in the plus four spot on their track. And that's where the game starts. The Romans, if you look down here, the Romans have these three uh, legion boxes. And each of these legion boxes is associated with one of these tracks. So the Marcomanni legion box, the Quadi, and the Iazages. And you have a certain amount of legions. There's a six legion uh, limit. And then you have leaders. This is Marcus Aurelius. He, has, he starts with a three combat value. He also has a demoralized side that will be a one combat value, but he starts on his uh, three side. Here, the other leader is Pompeianus. He only has a one, and he does not have a demoralized side, so he adds his one combat value. And these legions, let me just show you, 
and really this is only historical. They have numbers, Legio 1, number 2. They have historical designations and names there. And on the other side, they just have what looks like a legionnaire with a, uh, a large shield and a, a short sword. So you start the game with 10 available legions. There are two legions that are in this box, which is called the recovery box. Historically, at the beginning of the game, at 170, there were plagues and a lot of wars that were just wrapping up or battles that were wrapping up. And Marcus Aurelius didn't have as many legions as he normally has, so you start with two down. So I'm going to go ahead and split them up. You start the game by splitting them up between these three boxes. You will notice that I have Marcus Aurelius leading a full stack of six legionnaires on the Marcomanni track. The reason I want to take out the Marcomanni quickly is if they ever get into this box, the game is over. The Romans immediately lo uh, lose the game. The Quadi and the Iazages, there are negative effects if they get into these boxes, but it doesn't cause an immediate loss. So I'm trying to knock them out immediately so that I don't have to worry about losing the game. Believe me, there's plenty of other ways that you can lose the game. You can lose the game by your Imperium uh, track going down to zero, which means you are usurped. Public opinion and your men don't believe in you any longer, and they kick Marcus Aurelius to the curb and choose someone else to be their leader. You can also lose uh, by getting to the end and having uh, not all the tribes um, subjugated. So that's another way to lose. So there's quite a few ways to lose, and it is a very, very challenging game. So we are starting in 170 CE. We are also starting, there are three seasons. There's spring, summer, and winter. That's what these boxes represent. And then you have a housekeeping phase, and that is one entire year. You will then move the year counter up and start back at the in the spring round. During the spring round, the Romans draw five cards. You can carry a maximum of five cards over from year to year. Um, that's your hand limit. But if you've played certain events, you can actually carry over more cards. We'll get into that later if and, if and when I take those events. Typically, the Barbarians get three cards per round. They're going to draw those randomly and execute those in the spring, summer, and winter. Barbarians, or the Romans, only get five cards in the spring, three in the summer, and only one in the winter. And there's a negative one to battle rolls. The Romans just didn't fight well during the winter time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to draw five Roman cards. And I may not show you each and every card, but I do want to, in this first hand, give you an example of what these cards uh, look like. So you'll notice this is a card. It is an event. So this says battle before dice roll. I can add three to the Roman battle roll, and that will help me defeat the barbarians. This one, during the Roman turn, I can place a truce marker on one barbarian armor that is north of the Danube, that river. That army doesn't move for the rest of the year, and you cannot attack it. Its cards still add to the surge pile. We'll talk about that uh, later. This is a card that will be discarded for an action. I can discard this card. You'll notice it doesn't have an event. I can discard this card to build a couple of level, level 1 forts. I can discard it to flip one level fort, one fort to a level 2. I can increase my Imperium track number by one. There are other things that I, I can discard a card to move armies between boxes. I can discard two cards to move to an off-map conflict that are right here, and we'll talk about those when those come up. I can also always discard one tard, card, tard, one card to attack one of the barbarian tribes. So that's an example of some of those cards. Here's another one. Battle after Roman defeat. Play this event card when I lose a battle to avoid losing a legion. We'll talk about that later. And then after the barbarian card draw, which in the first round there are no barbarian card draws, I can discard to disregard the effects of plague or plague worsens, which ends up hurting my IP track and potentially uh, causing me to lose uh, multiple legionnaires. So those are the five cards that I've drawn. So in this first round, I'm going to try to do my best to attack the Marcomanni and get them up to their homeland. I'd love to defeat them this first round, but I don't know that that's going to happen. So with my first card, I'm going to go ahead and discard this card to the discard pile. 
to attack the Marco Mani. So my legion, my combat value, you can see here in the left, I get one for each legion in my stack and the combat value of the leader. So right now I have six legions and three from Marco, Marcus Aurelius. My total combat value is a nine. The Marco Mani have a four combat value plus two for their terrain. The terrain is an abstraction of how comfortable and familiar uh, the barbarians are with their own territories north of the Danube. It can represent tactics such as ambush, uh, etc. But the farther they get in their territory, the larger their bonuses are. For you to realistically defeat one of these tribes in these upper areas, you're going to need a couple of cards and you're going to hopefully have to have them demoralized, which doesn't happen a lot. So we're going to go ahead and attack. I'm a nine to this Marcomani six. I'm going to take these dice. The red is always Roman. The green is the Barbarians. I'm going to roll them, and we're going to add those results to the combat values. So the Romans rolled a 2. I'm, that means I'm an 11. And they're a 6 plus a 5. That means, that means uh, they're an 11 as well. At this point, it's a tie. We're just going to go ahead and re-roll. So I'm going to go ahead and re-roll. Okay, I defeated him this time. I rolled a 4 to his 3. Added to my 9, that's 13. The 3 added to his 6 is only a 9. So I'm going to defeat him. What happens when he's defeated? He's pushed one space back and nothing else happens. So he is defeated. So now we move on. I still have four cards. One thing I do want to point out, I'm not so sure it's the wisest thing to play all of your cards every round. I like to try to carry over one or two. I like to also try to carry over certain cards. For instance... This card that I showed you at the very beginning, add three to the Roman battle roll. If I win, flip the barbarian armor, army to its demoralized side. I want to try to save that to where it's really going to help me. But we'll, we'll see how this goes. So looking at my other cards, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just discard another card to attack again. So they're now an eight and I'm a nine. So it's basically I have a plus one advantage. So we roll the dice. All right, so this came up, and this is going to be an example that I'm going to show you. You'll notice the Romans rolled a 6. So add that to their 9. That's a 15. The Barbarians, 8 plus 3 would be 11. I'm going to win, and I'm going to move them one space further back. So this is going well for me so far. Also, you'll notice I rolled a 6. Anytime a, a Roman legion is involved in combat led by Marcus Aurelius, and he rolls a 6 you get one Imperium point. So you're going to take your Imperium point track, which is on four currently, you're going to push that up to five. So that's a bonus. Now, if you roll a one with an army led by Marcus Aurelius, you're going to have an opposite effect. You're going to reduce that Imperium track by one. So this time I got lucky. I bumped my Imperium points up, which I think uh, is, a, is a good thing. Um, I still have three cards left. I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm going to try to attack one more time. And I'm going to use that special card that I just showed you. All right. So I'm going to discard this card to attack. So that's one. So we're now attacking. I'm a nine and he's a 10. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card. So I'm going to add three to my Roman battle roll. So I'll throw that there. So once again, I'm, I'm actually outmanned by one. He's 10 to my nine. We're going to roll, but I am plus three. Boom. So you'll notice I rolled another six. I'm going to move my Imperium points up, which is very, very good. That's the easiest way to lose this game is, is ignore your Imperium points. So I added three to my battle roll. So nine to my nine is an 18. His five plus his 10 is a 15. I win. So I'm going to defeat him and I'm going to push him back to his home territory but the card had another ability. If you win, flip the Barbarian army to its demoralized side and retreat at one space. So that, that's another. So I played that card. I'm going to actually flip that Mark Amani. And now he's a 10 on my 9. So I'm going to go ahead and take a risk here, guys. Because I have the opportunity right now to put him out of the game. I'm going to discard a card now. Remember I said, don't always play your cards? This is an example that I want to play my card. So here, we're just going to have a roll-off. I'm hoping that, to beat him by 
by two or higher. Okay, so I, I'm not going to win. Nine and four is a 13. Eight, 10. So it's 13 to a 13. I have no cards to discard. I didn't mention this, but you can discard one card to add plus one to your Roman combat roll. So we're just going to go ahead and re-roll. So it was a tie. Anytime you tie, you just move on and re-roll off. All right. So, hey, look at this, guys. This is going really well. I rolled a five, added to my nine as a 14. He's a 10 plus one is 11. I defeat him. So what happens? So I'm going to take the Marcomani counter, and I'm going to move him, move him to the Surrendered Tribes box. That means he is out of the game, with the exception of any event that brings him back in the game, or any time he's called on to make what's called an Oathbreaker check. Because he has, in essence, promised the Romans, hey, you've defeated me, I'm now not going to take part in the wars anymore. So... If an Oathbreaker card comes up or a card that says force the Marcomani to have an Oathbreaker check, they're going to make a check to see if they're going to come back into the game. We'll talk about that later. We're not going to talk about it now. But at this point, I have defeated the Marcomani in the first turn. This is going swimmingly. So we're done with this round. I've played my five cards. We skipped the Barbarian phase. We're now going to move to the Summer phase of... Uh, 170 CE. So now we're going to draw three cards from the Barbarian deck. And you draw them one at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and draw all three and place them here. And we'll play them off the top. So let's flip this card. What does it say? The Marcomani. Advance the Marcomani forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. Add this card to the surge pile. Well, they're out, so this is going to go into the surge pile. Now, what happens with the surge pile is if you ever, uh, if you ever get the third card in that surge, what's going to happen is all other barbarian tribes that round that weren't activated are going to be activated. That will be an opportunity for the Marcomani to do an Oathbreaker check, for example. So nothing happened from that event. And if I do something wrong, I apologize, guys. But sometimes it's hard to do this, record, talk about everything, and I'm going to make a mistake. So let's go ahead and flip the second of three Barbarian cards. Ooh, I got lucky. Quiet on the Danube. Do not draw any more Barbarian cards this round. So I'm going to go ahead. This does not go in the Surge Pile. It goes in the Discard. The card that I drew, I'm going to put back on top of the deck. So the Barbarian turn ends there in the Summer Phase. So now we go to the Roman Phase. I'm going to draw three cards. Let's see what I drew. I can place a couple of level one forts on the Azages uh, track, which is actually good. This is a nothing. And then Roman turn, I can add two IP or end a mutiny, which we haven't covered that yet because that's not, that, that's not happened. So at this point, one of my concerns is I want to make sure this Marcomani track is protected so that the Marcomani cannot get back into the fight. So I'm going to actually go ahead and discard this card to put out two level one forts on the Marcomani track. So you put them here above the Danube and you put them, they, they actually have a plus one side and a plus two side. So at this point I have two level one forts which are gonna help me with attacks, but if I can flip them over, they're actually gonna help me when an Oathbreaker check happens uh, on that for the Marcomani. I'm also going to go ahead and play this card just because it's it's so good that I, I want to make sure and play it. I'm going to place two level two forts on eligible spaces on the ESAG's track. So I'm going to go ahead and put two level two forts, which is very nice. So I'll put them here and here. And the reason you do that is because these forts at the end of the round have to trace supply back to the Danube. And if they're ever, ever interrupted by a fort that's been gotten rid of, then you lose everything north of that. So I'm going to go ahead and start building up that way. And then this card, I'm actually going to go ahead and hold on to. So you can see my second year, I didn't really do anything. And that's okay. I made good enough progress in my first year that it's all right. So we're going to go ahead and move the track to the winter phase. And we're going to draw our three barbarian cards, just like we did last time. I'm going to put them here and then we'll look at them one at a time. I drew another Quiet on the Danube. I swear that I shuffled these like 10 times, but 
So that's going to end this turn. So I'm not really getting to show you a lot of great examples here in this turn, uh, but, but it is what it is. So now we move to the Roman phase. I'm going to go ahead and draw one card. I draw a Barbarian Informants. Before Barbarian card draw, I can look at the top five cards of the Barbarian deck, reorder them any way that I like, and then put them back on top of the deck. So that can be very valuable because I can put cards that aren't going to hurt me that round and, uh, you know, do some good. All right, so now it's my turn. I have two cards. I, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. One thing I do want to do, I'm actually going to discard the Commodus card to flip this level one fort to a level two fort. And you may ask me, why are you doing that? The Marcomanni have already surrendered. You don't need that extra plus two in, in battle. You will notice if you look at the, at the counter, it has a plus one pacify on the bottom. The pacify number is the total number of legionnaires, leaders combat value, and the number of level two forts that you have on that track intact. So at this point, six, nine, I would have a 10. I, I would not, they would not even get to roll because they roll a D6 and they have to roll higher than the pacification value. So they can't, but I don't want to keep all my troops tied up here. I want to leave two or three troops, have a couple of forts, and be able to move my troops away from here so that they can't get back into the fight. So that's something that I, uh, you know, you got to be aware of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this last card. I, I just don't, there's nothing else happening. So we're going to call the, and remember, battle in the, uh, in the winter is at negative one for the Romans. So it's not always the best to, uh, to battle. So we're going to go ahead and go to the housekeeping phase. And I'm going to pull my rule book out and just we're going to go down uh, the housekeeping. There's five or six things that you're going to do. First, you look at perform an attrition check for every fort marker on the board. This represents losses due to raids, starvation, weather, and desertion. I'm going to roll for each fort on the map. On a roll of six, you're going to remove a level one fort or reduce a level two to a level one. So let's go ahead... I've got two dice. The red is this fort, and the green is that fort, looking for no sixes. All right, so they're okay. I have the same over here. This is red. This is green. Okay, so the green one actually took a hit, so it's going to go down to a level one, which stinks, but it is what it is. So that's the first step of housekeeping. Then you look to make sure no forts are out of supply, meaning there's no gaps. If this fort was not here, this fort would be out of supply and you would then remove it. Then you remove to temporary truce markers. That actually is a card that puts a temporary truce markers on the tribes. That isn't going to happen. You're going to flip Marcus Aurelius from demoralized to bold. He was never demoralized. Discard any cards that remain in my hand. Exception, I can save one card to the meditation space. Space two, if I have, so you can, you can only carry one card over from year to year. This is the meditations uh, space, so I'm going to go ahead and put one there. If I play the Illusion Mysteries card, I can actually carry two cards over. But at this point, I've only got the one, so I'll put that there. Uh, if the Marcomani, any off-map conflicts that are on, I would lose an IP. There are none of those. We didn't draw any of those. If there are, if Marcomani or Quadi are south of the Danube, they are not. You'll notice this says negative one IP. You would lose an IP at Imperium Point. If you ever go to zero, remember you're, you're usurped. Now I advance the year marker to 171 CE, and we... Uh, place the round marker from housekeeping on to, sp to the spring phase. And that's it. You go back to playing. So we're going to draw three barbarian cards. We're going to put those here and we're going to do them one at a time. The, Z the Iazages. Advance the Iazages forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. I will add this card to the surge pile. So we're going to move the Iazages forward one space. So they're now closer to causing me some, some pain. Marcomani, advance the Marcomani forward or flip from demoralized to bold. Once again, the Marcomani are not able to do, oh, you know what I forgot to do, sorry. Um, 
No, I'm supposed to do that after I do this phase, I think, right? Let me just double check here, guys. So what, what I'm thinking about is you, you get to reorder or reassemble your legions in your legion boxes, taking any from the recovered box and moving those uh, around so that you can uh, reorder your things and, and do what you want to do. Yeah, so I was supposed to assign legions uh, at the beginning of the turn. So I apologize. Let me let me go back to that. I'll leave these cards here. I'm gonna. It's not gonna make me change my mind. I'm definitely gonna move Marcus Aurelius over here to the Eazages track. I'm gonna move Pompeianus to the Marcomani track. The two legions are gonna come back in from the recovery box. I'm actually gonna stack those here on the Eazages front. That will give me six six legions, and then I'm gonna put one legion in the quadi box because there are events that bring out leaders and you can't just put a leader there unless you have a legion. So in the Marcomani box, I have five legions, Pompeianus, which gives me a total of a six, plus one for the pacification. Any Marcomani are never gonna be able to, to do an Oathbreaker check as long as that's the case. Over here in the Eazages box, which is my next goal to get them up here to their home territory and defeat them, I have six legions plus Marcus Aurelius. I have a nine combat factor. I can put some hurting on those guys if I so choose. So let's go ahead and look. So the Marcomani, they cannot move. So I'm going to put those in the surge box. That's going to cause a surge. So it's going to take the Quadi cannot attack. Everyone else is going to activate and move. So they're going to move. I'm actually going to discard this level one fort to stop the ESAGs from moving. I can do that. So I'm going to do that and stop it. Therefore, everyone's activated. And these cards are returned to the discard pile. And we continue with the barbarian phase. ESAGs again. And this is the special ESAGs cavalry card. The Eazages activate twice, advance them forward two spaces or flip from the demoralized to bold and then add this to the surge pile. So I'm going to move them forward once and then I'm going to reduce this once to stop them from moving into this raid into Moesha box because I don't want to lose, uh, I don't want to lose an IP because you have to discard a card if they move in there. If you have no cards, then you lose an IP. So I'm going to try to avoid that. So there we go. That's the end of the Barbarian phase. Now we go to the Roman phase. Remember the Romans draw five cards and we're still in the spring. So I drew five cards. I'll quickly look at those. These are actually some good ones. Okay. All right. So let's go. I'm going to do this card first. This says choose any two barbarian armies and demoralize them. So I'm going to choose the Quadi, flipping them over, and the Eazages, just to make them a little easier to defeat. So I'm going to go ahead and discard a card. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and discard this one to do an attack here. So I'm a 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 1 for my fort is a 10 to their 4. So we're going to go ahead and roll the dice. All right, so the Barbarians rolled a 1. If they weren't demoralized, the Barbarians would now become demoralized because they rolled a 1. They, they uh, And actually, I'm going to pick this card up and put it in my hand because I can use it. I rolled a 5, which gives me no benefit other than adding 5 to my 9, 14, allowing me to crush the ESAGs and drive them back. So I'm going to go ahead and actually attack them again. We are not in the winter phase. I'm going to go ahead and discard that card to attack again. So I'm a nine on their five with no bonuses. Let's roll my dice. So we tied. I'm going to defeat them. I have a 13 to their nine. So I'm going to push them back to the plus four. And this is good. I may actually try to beat them all the way this time. And you may be sitting here going, boy, this is an easy game. It, it, it normally is not easy like this, I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and discard to make a, another attack. So they're a six, I'm a nine. All right, we each rolled six. 
So that means I'm going to gain an Imperium point. So we move that up. Now I'm at the max Imperium points on the Roman track, the Imperium points track. That's going to give me a benefit at the spring round of plus one additional card when I draw my initial hand. A very good thing. This roll is now, while I, I end up defeating them, so I'm going to push them back, but it's going to flip them from demoralized to bold. That's what a barbarian who rolls a six gets. So now they're pushed back. I have a couple cards left. They're now a 10 on my nine. Probably not going to do that. I'm actually going to play this card. I'm going to do on the quaddy front two level two forts on eligible spaces. So I'm going to get some forts out here to try to help me. So that's what we've got. And then I've got one card that I'm going to hold on to, and we're going to move into the summer phase. So now we do three Barbarian cards. I draw three. I'm going to place those there. We'll look at this first one. Advance the Quadi forward one space or flip from the Demoralized to Bold. Add this card to the Surge. The Quadi are Demoralized, so they're going to flip to Bold rather than moving forward. And then this card is going to uh, move to the Surge pile. The next card in the Barbarian deck, advance the ESAGs forward one space or flip from the Demoralized to Bold. This is also going to get added to the Surge pile. They're going to move forward and it's actually going to activate both the Markamani who are surrendered and the Kwadi who are in this track. So the Kwadi are going to go ahead and just move forward. Very simple. The uh, Markamani would do what's called an Oathbreaker check at this point. So I, I have to count my legions up. I have a five plus a leader, six plus one. They cannot make a check because they can't overcome that on a D6. So I successfully stop them. We go ahead and take these cards and put them into the discard pile. Then we play the last barbarian card, Plague. Lose one IP or, I'm sorry, lose one IP Roll 1d6. If I roll a 1, place two legions from any army armies of your choice in the recovery box. On any other roll, I place 1. So I don't want to roll a 1. Let's see what I got. And I rolled a 1. So I have to place two armies into the recovery box. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So what happens is they succumb to the effects of plague and they're pushed back. Or they're, they're actually sent to field hospitals. So that is my last Barbarian card in the spring. I'm sorry, in the summer. We're now going to move to the Roman phase. I'm going to draw my three cards, and I'm going to pick back up this single combat card. So once again, I would love to attack the Eazages three consecutive times and try to get them out. And I actually have some good cards that I... Okay, that happens during the winter. All right. So I'm going to discard this card to make two attacks on one front. So this takes the place of me having to discard a card. And I must make bo both attacks regardless of the outcome unless I have no legions left. So I'm seizing the initiative. So I'm going to go ahead and attack on this front. I've got six and three as a nine to an eight with no bonuses. I'm going to go ahead and you'll see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to roll. Ugh. Yikes. So I lose an Imperium point because the Romans rolled a 1, and I lose. So that's 9, that's a 10 to his 14. So I have to lose a Legion. So I'm going to take a Legion and put it in the recovery box. I don't retreat. They don't advance. The battle is now just over. But you remember, I now have to attack again because I played that card. So that was a really bad roll, but whatever. So I'm now only an 8 to his 8. Let's roll again. Okay, so he's going to get demoralized. I'm going to get that IP point back because I rolled a 6. I'm going to defeat him, pushing him back. And then I'm going to move a defeated army back two spaces instead of one towards their home base and flip them from bold to demoralized, but they are already demoralized. So I'm going to go ahead and push him all the way back to his homeland. 
through that card play. Um, so once again, I'm going to take another risk. So I'm going to discard this card to attack. So I'm an 8, 5, 6, 7, 8 on his 10. This is probably not a good thing. But I'm going to go ahead and do single combat. I'm going to resolve this battle by rolling a d6 for each side. The highest number wins. If the Romans win, the defeated army is uh, demoralized and retreats. They can't retreat if I defeat him here. I would also gain the leader, Marcus Valerius Maximanus, for free. This card gets discarded. If I lose, I'm going to lose two IP. So this is a risk. I don't know that I should be doing this, but I'm trying to show you guys how being aggressive is a good thing. So once again, we are doing a single combat, so I don't care what my attack value is nor what his values are. We're going to roll off. I'm hoping to roll higher than he does. And boom, I do. I rolled a six. He rolls a three. Therefore, Marcus Aurelius defeated the leader of the Eazages in single combat. This card gets discarded to the history pile. The history pile is nothing more than a victory point track that gives you extra points for playing certain cards that, that are harder to do, like a single combat. All right, so I have now defeated the Eazages. They're going to the Surrendered Tribes box. So you can see this game is going very, very well for me. I'm going to tell you, this is the 11th time that I've played. I've never had one go this well for me. Now, we're not out of the woods yet. We've got a long way to go. we got to get some forts on the board so that I can stop any Oathbreaker checks. And then we've got to go full out trying to push the Quaddy back and hopefully uh, make some progress. So that is the end of the summer round. We're going to move to the winter. We draw our three Barbarian cards, playing one at a time, each one at a time. So advance Eazages forward one space. They're out of the game, so we're going to add this to the Surge Pile, as it says. Advance the Marcomani forward. They're out of the game. We're going to add this to the Surge Pile. Now, I'm, I'm starting to question, because I just can't remember. It's been about three weeks since I played last. I'm wondering when I draw that card and they are surrendered, do they do an Oathbreaker check? So I, I, may, I may be doing this wrong, guys, so I apologize uh, for that. Um, let me just give me two seconds. And I'm not sure I'm actually going to going to be able to find that very quickly without stopping the video. And I don't know that I really want to stop the video. I've got some other things i got to work on today. All right, so we're just going to say, once again, I'm just trying to give you an example of play. I may be screwing this up, but I don't think they get a chance at an Oathbreaker. Now, even if the Marcomani do get a chance at an Oathbreaker, I've got them pacified above what they can do. They wouldn't be able to make that pacification roll. The same is true for the Marcomani. I've got five legions plus Marcus Aurelius. That's an eight. They can't roll over an eight. So what I'm going to say to you is if that's wrong, I will correct it at the end of the video, but at this point, it doesn't matter because I have enough numbers to pacify them without them being able to get a roll and it wouldn't matter. So the final Barbarian card, the Marcomani again. We're gonna put that in a surge pile. That's gonna bust off, so the Marcomani can't do anything, but the Eazages, or the Quadi can move. I'm gonna allow them to move because I don't wanna have to rebuild those forts. So we allowed them to move one space. We are now done with the Barbarian phase of Winter 171. We're going to draw only one Roman card. I'm going to flip it over. It is just discard to take an action. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to discard that to turn this level 1 fort on the Marcomani track to a level 2 fort. So that's what I did. I just added another pacification value there, and that's what I'm going to do. So, 171 comes to an end. We go to the housekeeping phase. We're going to do an attrition check for the forts. Red die, green die. So we just move forward looking for no sixes. Didn't roll a six. Red die, green die. No sixes. That was double one. And then red die for the last fort. We rolled a four. They are okay. 
Uh, back to the housekeeping track, and I'm very bad about no forts out of supply. There are no temporary truce markers. Marcus Aurelius is bold. Uh, no cards remain in my hand. No off-map conflicts. No Marcomani or Quadi south of the Danube. The Imperium, mar Imperium marker is good, and I'm actually going to get a card if I can survive this next round. And then we're going to simply move the year marker and the round marker. So we're in 172. We're going to go ahead and reorganize our armies. So here on the Marcomani track, I've got plus two for pacification. I'm actually going to leave... I'm going to leave those four legions there. I'm going to get all three of these legions back. I'm going to move these five here and put a sixth on it, moving Marco Marcus Aurelius. I'm going to put Pompeianus and two legions here. So at this point, my pacification values for the different tracks, the Marcomani have a pacification value of six. They're going to stop any Oathbreaker attempts. The Iazagis track only has a pacification of three. I've got to try to get a couple of forts. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and move so they'll have a four and they'll have a five. I really don't want those to get back into, into the game, and that's something that I'm desperately uh, worried about. So that's what we'll do. We did rearrange those. The forts are all good. We're going to go draw our three barbarian cards, put those here, and we'll show them to you one at a time. The quad eye. Advance quad eye forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. It's not the case. They are not under temporary truce. So I'm actually going to reduce this fort by one level to stop him from moving. I don't want him to move. I'm going to put that in the surge pile. Good omens. Flip all barbarian armors to, armies to their bold side. They're already bold. This one gets discarded rather than the surge pile. And the Marcomani. Advance the Marcomani or flip from, so this goes to the surge pile. So I avoided a surge, so not everyone else is gonna act. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw my five cards, and we gotta do some work trying to get some of these forts up so that our values are improved. So I draw five cards. Okay, I got some, <clears throat> not bad. All right, so my first card that I'm gonna play I'm going to choose a card from the Roman discard pile and play that card instead. Then discard this pot card to history, Philosophical Inquiry. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that. I'm going to pull out of the discard pile that card that gives me two level two forts on the Eazages track. Where is that one? It's called Sarmatia. So I'm going to pull that card out of the discard. I'm going to place two level two forts on any eligible spaces on the Eazages track. So two level twos, that's going to help with my pacification. So I'm going to go ahead and put a level two there and a level two there. So right now my pacification value is a three for my legions, four with my leader. This gives me nothing, five and six. So they will not be able to do any uh, Oathbreaker checks, which is good. All right, that's not good for me right now. Nope. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and discard this card, and I'm going to attack with the full force here against the quad eye. So I've got a 6, 9, I've got a 10 to their 7. Let's move the dice over so you can make sure and see it. I think you can. All right, so I'm a 10, plus 3 is a 13, they're a 7, plus 5 is a 12. I'm going to win. I push him back. This fort was only plus 1. That's why uh, I only added the 1 to that combat. All right, I'm also going to go ahead and discard to make this level 1 fort a level 2, adding to uh, the pacification level on the Eazages track. All right, I'm going to go ahead and discard another one to do another attack. They're now a 9. I'm a 6, 3, 9, plus 2 is 11. So I'm an 11 to their 9. Let's go ahead and roll. All right, so they rolled a 5. They're a 14, and I'm a 15. So I'm going to push them back. 
to their, you know, they're one step away from their home territory. I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this card for this round. I think we've done enough, enough good. So we're now going to move to the summer phase. We're going to draw our three barbarian cards. We're going to play them one at a time. Uh, quiet on the Danube. Do not draw any more barbarian cards this round. That's pretty fortunate because there's only like three or four of those in the deck, and I've drawn all three of them so far. Maybe I need to try to shuffle those and spread those out, but it is what it is. So in the summer phase, we're going to draw three Roman cards. I have one here that I have left over. I am hoping to get a couple of good cards so that I can really put the hurt. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this card because I need an extra legion to help me. I'm going to le add the Legio 22 Primagenia to any Danu Danubian army or off-map conflict. If I play for the event, discard to the history pile. So once again, I'm going to put that in that history pile, and then I'm going to pull out of here the Legion 22, and I'm going to put them over here on this track, which now makes it so the Marcomani won't get to do a Oathbreaker check at this point. The reason that's important to get those extra, and there's only two extra Legions out of that box, is because you really need to maintain your full fighting force here with Marcus Aurelius, but you need to keep these other two tracks subjugated. I need to get this other leader. You can see there's this other leader, uh, Maximanius, and I already had a card that allowed me, you know what? I used that card in single combat and I should have had him out. If you remember that, remember the card single combat? If I won the battle, I was able to pull Valerius Maximanius for free. I didn't do that, so shame on me. I'm going to go ahead and put him here. I'm going to move that legion over there. So now my total pacification value on Marcomani. This is a great thing about solo games. You can make these kind of, kind of corrections. I have three legions plus this two liter of five plus two forts is seven. On the E is Ages, I have four legions plus a one liter plus three pacification. So I have eight. So I am good on the pacification front at this point. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm actually going to go ahead. I'm going to put two level one forts out. I'm going to just discard this to put two level one forts. I'm going to put a level one here, and I'm going to build a level one in the Kawadi homeland. There's nothing that prevents me from doing that. Then I'm going to go ahead and discard this one to go ahead and pump up this to a plus two just to give me uh, better force in case they start bum rushing me. And then I'm going to hold on to this card moving into the winter phase. So now we move into the winter phase. We're going to draw three barbarian cards. Now remember, I can discard a card to stop a surge, which I may end up doing this time. It just depends on what happens. All right. Lose one IP per year until resol resolve. This is an off map conflict. I hate these cards. So we're going to put this card in the Western Empire. Now what I have to do is I have to discard two cards or play an event that allows me to move a stack of legions over to this off-map conflict. Then I have to discard another card to do a battle. You can see the value is only a four. They're going to roll as well. But it's just a very card-intensive requirement. And it's hard to... You can't leave those things go. So... That's going to be trouble for me. So that's the first Barbarian card we drew. And we drew another one. This goes into the Eastern Empire. So I'm in trouble. I'm going to be honest with you. This one is Bad Omens. Roll to determine which Barbarian army flips to demoralized side. So we're going to roll. I roll a two. It's the Marcomani. They're not in play. This goes to the discard. All right. So now we're in the winter phase. I draw just one card. I have one card in my hand. There's really nothing I can do, and this is going to cause me to lose a couple of IP, which is not good. All right, so what do I want to do? Should I just go ahead and discard these two to get those over there to that off map? No, nope, because I have to, dip to maintain that army. I, I can't do that. All right, so it's during the winter. Battles are not 
not great. My IP is up as high as it's going to go. I could build another level one fort just for fun, or I could flip those two. Let me go ahead and discard one card to turn this into a level two fort. And let me go ahead and just hold on to this card till next round. So that's the end of the, we go to the housekeeping phase. And this is going to be a little bit different because we have these off map conflicts. First off, we're going to do attrition for my forts. Now, this is going to start to hurt because you can see I can roll a six and have to lose one of my good, my good forts. So red die for the bottom, green for the top. All right, we're okay there. Good. Red, green. We're good. Red, green. We're good. Yikes. Red, green. Are you kidding me? Am I going to be okay? Last roll is a four. Hey, I didn't lose any forts in the attrition phase of the housekeeping step. I'm totally ecstatic. Forts out of supply. There are no forts out of supply. Remove the temporary truce. There's none. Flip Marcus Aurelius. He wasn't hurt. Discard any cards. I have the one. I'm okay. If there are any active map conflicts, deduct one IP per conflict. There are two. We lose two IP points. And that sucks because I was going to get plus one card in round one. Oh, well. Imperium marker, Imperium markers above. Now we're going to advance the housekeeping or the round marker and we're in 173. I am hoping that this year I can end this game right here and right now, but we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. We draw our three barbarian markers or barbarian cards. We play the first one. Oh, I was supposed to, I can readjust my legions. I think I'm going to leave that guy there. Six, seven, eight. I think I'm going to leave everybody where they are. I've got good numbers right now. So Eazages, advance to Eazages. They are out of the game. This is going to the surge pile. So that's going to kick off. There is no Oathbreaker check here because I have three, four, five, six, seven. I'm, they are pacified. These guys, I'm going to flip this over to a level one to stop him from moving. And that's where we stand. The next card. Legions demand donative. This sucks. Place a mutiny marker on any army led by Marcus Aurelius. It cannot be activated until I discard a card from my hand and deduct one IP. Mutinous troops do not count towards pacification value when rolling for Oathbreakers. They do not remove this marker during the housekeeping. I have to get, have to get rid of it. So I'm going to put that here, and we are going to put a mutiny marker. Mutiny marker on top of this army led by Marcus Aurelius. That really sucks, but it is what it is. All right, the final card. Roll a d6 for each fort on the map. If the number is less than the train rating, the fort takes one hit. Reduce from level two to level one or remove a level one fort. This card sucks, and this is what I've been worrying about coming out. So if I roll less than the train value, the forts are gonna take a hit or be removed. Let's start on the Eazages track. Terrain value of two, I rolled a six, we're fine. Terrain value of three, I rolled a three, we're fine. Four, what did I roll? A four, so we are fine. Terrain value of two, I rolled a four, we're good. Terrain value of four, I rolled a five, we're good. Terrain value of seven, so I will always roll, so that's gonna be eliminated, and then this one also will be eliminated. Terrain value of two. I rolled a six. Terrain value of four. All right, so we only lost those two forts. I'm okay with that. But this card stinks. I'm going to be totally honest with you. And I was hoping that card was somehow buried in the stack, but unfortunately, it was not. I also didn't lose an IP point for my mutiny, so I did uh, go ahead and... Nope, I, I have to do that when I get rid of it. All right, so we're moving on to the Barbarian phase of the spring round. I'm going to draw five cards. I have one card in my hand. So I've got some work to do this round. All right. Let me just real quickly look at these. I will use that card definitely. Definitely will use that card this turn. All right, 
right, so I'm going to go ahead and discard this card to get rid of this mutiny counter. That will also take one IP, and then this card gets removed, which is a good thing. All right, so now I've got five cards. I've got a couple good cards. I'm going to try my best to attack here and defeat the quad eye. Not even going to worry about these until maybe I try this for a round or two and don't succeed. So I'm going to discard a card to place two level one forts. Placing one here and placing one here because I need some help. All right. Dude, I'm going to hold on to that in two. All right, so I'm going to discard this to go ahead and attack the quad eye. They are a 12. I'm a 6, 9. I'm only a 10. So this is, this is kind of risky. Only a 10. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. All right, so they defeat me. I lose one legion, and that really throws a kink in my plans. I don't get, have to retreat, do anything else, but I did lose that battle. That stinks. <sighs> well, I'm going to hold on to that. I think I'm just going to hold on to all three of my cards because I'm I'm in a I'm actually in a place where if I get one other decent card, I can maybe bump those two forts up and I can go up and probably crush the quad eye and end the game. But I'm going to go ahead and hold off on it. So we're going to move to the summer phase. We're going to draw our three Barbarian cards. And I actually have three cards in my hand, so we'll see what happens. Reshuffle the Barbarian deck, including all cards from the discard pile, but not the Surge. Then discard this card. So that's okay. I'm actually going to just reshuffle the Barbarian deck. Let me give it a couple of shuffles here. And I'd rather have that happen, although some of those nasty cards like that attrition card for forts can possibly come back up now. But that's the way that's the way it goes. And then that goes in the discard pile. And then we draw the second card. Flip the Marcus Aurelius leader marker to demoralized. Great. Doesn't go to the surge. <clears throat> so that basically kills my plan for the entire rest of the year, which isn't good. And the third, advance quad eye forward one space or flip from demoralized to, uh, and then that's going to get added to the surge. So I'm actually going to go ahead and keep him there. I don't want to have to fight him one more time. So now we go to my barbarian round. I draw three cards. I have three cards in my hand. Okay, that's a good one. All right, so I'm going to actually do this card. Auction in the form of the De Deified Trajan. I'm going to gain two Imperium points. You can see that draw two new cards is very, very, would be very nice, but my Imperium is getting low. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It will also be discarded to the history pile. So I'm going to move my Imperium up to six. Now, what do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and, dang it, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and attack. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put two level ones out, which sucks. I'm going to put a level one there. I don't even need it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a level one here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and attack. So I'm going to discard a card and attack. So they are a 12 versus my 5, 6. I don't want to attack. Grant, don't do that. That would be moronic at this point. And it's really hard to go into those off-map conflicts because they take so many stinking cards. And they're going to hurt my... Well, what do you want to do here, Grant? I can't just sit here. Sorry, guys, I'm, I just need a. All right, so I, I'm actually going to just bump. I'm going to bump up 
this level one to a level two to help me out. And then I'm gonna bump this one up to a level two to help me as well. Then I'm gonna hold on, nope, yep, I'm gonna hold on to those two cards and we're gonna go ahead and skip and go to the winner phase. So we're gonna draw our three barbarian cards. So you can see that sometimes you just don't get the cards. Advance quad eye forward, so I don't want that to happen. It's gonna get added to the surge, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a hit on this fort. Draw the next card. Damn it, the quad eye are gonna activate again, and there's gonna be a surge. So I'm actually gonna take that fort out so he can't move. The surge is gonna cause an Oathbreaker if I can't pacify totally. One, two for two level two forts. Three, four with my leader. Seven, the Markamani cannot retract. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the Eazages can't as well. We just go to our third and final card. So that surge kind of was a waste for them, but that's okay. The final card. E is AG is advanced, so they can't do anything. That goes to the surge pile. So I'm going to get my one card. Remember, we're in the winter phase. Yeah, I really don't want to. I'm going to lose two IP. I'm going to discard one card to move my IP up. Now, remember, I can only carry one of these cards over. I'm going to go ahead and put... I'm gonna go ahead and put two level one forts out. So I'm gonna put a level one there and I'm gonna put a level one here. So I'm gonna keep this one card and carry it over to the next year just because we're gonna to go to the housekeeping phase. Um, I gotta get a couple good cards next time so I can end this. Attrition, we're gonna do attrition for all these forts. Red and green, follow me here. All right, so this goes to a level one. That's not good. We're gonna do a green for that one. It's fine. Red, green. We're not looking for sixes and I keep rolling sixes now. Red, green. Okay, they're fine. Red, green. And then red, green for the last two. All right, so this one got hit. That represents just snipers and uh, scouting parties and some of your, your supplies being hit. That's just what that represents. No forts are out of supply. Remove temporary truce, there's none. Marcus Aurelius becomes bold again. Um, I don't lose any cards. There are, I'm gonna lose two IP for these two on map conflicts, which is not good. I need to get rid of those. And then we advance the year. So we are at 174. I'd like to end it this year, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, Barbarian Phase, they get three cards. The, the Azages, nothing they can't overcome there. Oh, I was supposed to move my troops around. I'm going to put that troop back in there. So I have six. Here I have five, and here I have five. That's the most I can get. All right, so I, you know, I'm making some mistakes. Here I'm just going to automatically lose an IP. So I'm down to four. I don't like IP to get lower than four. Bad omens. Roll to determine which barbarian becomes demoralized. So we're going to roll a d6. I'm hoping for a, a three, the quad eye. So the quad eye get flipped to their demoralized side. That is awesome. Especially since this card doesn't go to the surge pile, not creating a surge. I may be able to defeat them this time. Let's see. So I draw my five cards. I'm gonna look at these. Can't use that one. Can't use that one. Okay, so it doesn't look like any of these are going to give me bonuses in combat, but it's nice that the quad eye were flipped, so I may end up being able to, to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna discard a card to make this a level two fort. And I'm going to discard this card to make this a level two fort. In preparation for this, I'm just going to do three battles in a row here if I can. All right, so I'm going to discard a card. I am a six plus three for Marcus, nine. 
I'm an 11 on their 10. So let's hope I outroll them. Nope. I lose an IP. They defeat me, so I lose. Wow, that's bad. And see, now at this point, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mm, so I'm going to go ahead and discard another card to fight. I'm going to discard this battle before dice roll card called Rain Miracle. I'll show you. Automatically win the battle I'm fighting and gain an IP. It's on the Danube. It's on a Danube front only. It can't be over here on the off map conflicts. The event may not be used in any home space. That's not where we are. And then I'm going to play it to the history pile. So I'm going to win this battle automatically. Put that in the history pile. Push him back. So the quad eye are in their home territory. I have one card left. And unfortunately, I, I can't do it because I don't have the cards, but we're, we're going to hold on. So we move to the summer phase. If I can make it through this summer phase, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win the game. Let's go ahead and draw three. Do not draw any more Barbarian cards this round quiet on the Danube. Awesome. I think I might win this here, guys. So I'm going to draw three cards. I have to reshuffle because I just ran the deck out. And I hope I haven't made too many mistakes. If there are, just please let me know. Correct them. Um, so I draw my, drew my three cards. I have four total cards. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to discard a card to do a battle here. Marcus Aurelius is a five legions, three, eight, plus two to the four, ten, versus his eleven. I'm going to play this card that says discard this card to reduce the terrain value by half in one battle. Round up. So the terrain value is eight. I'm going to discard this card to reduce that down to a four. So he magically now becomes a seven. And I like that card. It's called Local Guides. So in essence, what the Romans did was pay someone off to show them the proper paths to get behind the uh, quad eye so that they could, they could ambush them. So once again, I'm an eight. I'm a ten to his seven. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to win. Once again, I'm a 10. I rolled a 4. That's a 14. He's a 7. Plus 5 is a 12. I defeat him. He goes to the surrendered box. So, gentlemen, I just won my third time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I just won my third time. And, I, you know, you can see this actually went very, very easily for me. I happened to get the right cards. I rolled well. Remember all those non-sixes I rolled for the fort attrition rolls? That was very good. If you can't keep those forts up there, it gets very hard to keep the Markamani and Eazages out of the fight until you can defeat the Quad Eye. But it ended up working for me fairly well. Now, I do have these two off-map conflicts, which I don't think I have to defeat. Let me, let me just double check that too, guys, because I don't know that I've ever had. Give me a second. I apologize. You think I haven't played this game. So the player wins if all three barbarian armies have surrendered before the final round. So it doesn't say I have to have any of those off-map conflicts resolved. I've defeated the barbarians. So there you go. This is my third win in 11 or 12 tries of this game. I love the game. I have a good time with the game. There were a couple things we didn't show you or I didn't show you during this game. I didn't do any maneuvering or moving of my people between boxes. <clears throat> there are event cards where you can actually play these uh, river barges into these spaces and it allows you to move guys in between. I didn't do any of that. I've done that before. This time I didn't do that. It, it just wasn't necessary. I was able to really do what I needed to do and win the game. 
Now there is one other thing I do want to show you is the score. So let's go to section 9.1 in scoring because we are there and I'm going to go ahead and see what the score is. So I'll read this. If you win, count the number of years left on the year track. So first we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, and you count the end box. That's six. Add to this one point for any barbarian card in the history pile. I have no barbarian cards in the history pile. Then add this to my current IP. Divide the number by two. Current IP is three. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six and three is nine. Divide that number by two, round up. So I have a five. So my score is a five out of 10. That's not great. So that's just the way it is. Um, interestingly, I didn't get any of the Barbarian cards in. The Barbarian cards that would go in the scoring box are usually these off-map conflicts. That didn't happen. Um, plus the Rebellion card. Now, I should have had a Rebellion. Yeah, so I would have had a 6. So my score was, was a 6. No, it actually would have been a 5. So you can see, I, I did okay, um, but that, it's fine. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that, that's the end of the game, The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. Now, this is a playthrough. I'm going to go ahead and talk in a kind of my final thoughts. I'm going to do another video and kind of give a quick review of the game. Um, but let me know what I did wrong. Let me know if I did something that you didn't agree with, or if there's any other strategies that you like to play. This game is fun. I enjoy it. I've been glad that I've been able to share it with you. I did write a series of five action points on this game. They have they focus on different aspects like the cards, the map, the different boxes, strategy, etc. If you want to read those, check out our blog at theplayersaid.com. Uh, they've been put over the last six weeks or so on that blog. But yeah, go ahead and look for my final thoughts and kind of a quick review. Thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.